Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to put text behind a person inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So what this really comes down to is a layering and masking trick. The idea is that we want to separate the person from whatever's in the background and then put the text in between the two layers so that it will sit behind the person but in front of everything else in the background. So as a result of that, the less similar the colors are on the person that you're trying to mask out compared to the background and the less movement there is in the shot the easier it's going to be so before we even start creating a text element let's just go ahead and jump over to the color page so on the color page we can define a mask with a power window which will allow us to focus on this area right around the person and pretty much ignore everything else in the shot this kind of mask will work well for this shot because there isn't too much movement, so the power window should be able to track the person quite easily. So in order to do that power window tracking, we go over to this third tab over here where it says window. And because a human is a little bit of a complicated shape, we'll actually use the curve tool down here to define the power window. So you don't have to be extremely precise with it, but the idea is you want to draw an outline of the person we're trying to track. So you can left click to add a point and then left click to add another point. If you want to make it a curved shape, you can left click and hold to turn it into a Bezier curve with handles. And then you can left click and continue. And then basically just go around the outline of the person until you have a good masking shape. Now, although you can use the Bezier curves, it's not really required. You might be able to get a little bit more of a precise shape if you spend time on it. But for the most part here, I'll just left click and do straight lines for simplicity's sake. So let's just keep going down here till about there. And once you have your last point set, you just need to click on the first point to complete the power window. And now we have our masking shape. So you'll see over here in this corrector node that everything outside of the power window is now completely masked out. So we've already removed most of the image. Now for the lost information in this corrector node to actually go through to the output, we need to add in an alpha output. So to do that, you right click and you do add alpha output. You'll see this is a blue connector. So we take the blue alpha connector from the corrector node and we connect that to the output. And now everything outside of the node actually is removed in the final video too. So now we have the problem that although the shape works pretty decently for the first frame, it doesn't currently follow the person as he walks across the shot. So in certain frames, it's gonna be way off center. So in a low movement shot like this, tracking is actually quite easy. So with our power window, we can now go over to the tracker tab over here. Make sure you're at frame zero for this clip and then you hit plus on track forward. Assuming you have a good tracker shape and there's not too much movement, you should get a good following of the person around the shot as it tracks it on all of these dimensions, pan, tilt, zoom, rotate, and 3D. Now, if you needed your text to be here at the bottom at the last frame, you can see that the person's shape is bigger on the camera at the last frame here. So if you really cared about this bottom area, what you could do instead would be to go to the last frame where it's biggest and then do the tracking from there, except you do track in reverse but we're gonna have the text basically show in the middle of the screen. So we don't care so much about what's occurring down here so we can just ignore it. So now what we do still care about is getting rid of these green areas. So we wanna take this rough shape and correct it by using the qualifier tab. So if we click over here for qualifier, we can start selecting a qualifier range. So by default, it's on HSL, which stands for hue, saturation, and luminance three ranges that we can set to remove some of this extra background information. So the first thing we're going to need to do here is click over on the picker tool and then pick the main color that we actually want to keep. So we can start with this red of the shirt here and you'll see that basically everything that's not similar to that red shirt is now removed from the shot. So we've completely removed the background which is good but parts of the person are now being hidden as well. So to add that information back in, we need to use the picker add tool. So that's the one with the little plus sign here. And then you can click on the areas which have uh, basically part of the person. So in that case, this would be the backpack. So when we click there, it doesn't add much of the background in, which is good because the backpack color is kind of unique for the area we're trying to filter out. Uh, we can click over here to get the person's arms maybe click there one more time and up here at the head is going to be particularly important because the person's head is often in the middle of the shot so we can click up here and add the ears back in and 
just keep going till you have roughly the main shape here. So at this point, we have most of the person back in there. It's a little rough around the edges and a little bit of the original background does show through. For our purposes, it's not going to be too big of a deal because once again, it's at the bottom of the shot and we'll have the text in the middle. But this is kind of why for doing this kind of masking trick that the less similar the person is to the surroundings, the easier it's going to be to pull this off. Otherwise, you'll need to play around here for quite a while to get the settings just right to get rid of that background while keeping the person in view. So at this point, we can start playing around with the matte finesse settings down here. So we can make it a little bit smoother. Adding some denoise sometimes helps there, kind of evening out those edges. You may also want a little bit of a blur radius, but not too much because then that white edge will be really, really obvious. So let's drop that down to something like 19, I guess. And then if you want to pull in or remove from these edges, you can use the in out ratio. So if you move it to the left towards the inside, it's going to be pulling in from whatever the default qualifier was not going to be what we want. Probably we probably actually want to go the opposite direction, having an out ratio to help fill in those edges just a little bit more. So with the high and out ratio, I think we get a little bit too much of these white lines. So you could either use clean black to kind of remove those just a little bit and smooth everything out. Problem is there, it seems to be removing from the ears and the head up there. So we might actually just want to lower the in out ratio instead. And that might get us a little bit of a better result. Uh, basically with these controls, you just need to play around with them until you get a look that is good for you. So at this point, the part we actually care about up here is looking pretty good. We might try to remove this bit over here. So let's see what happens if we use the subtract picker tool and we'll just click there and that's going to be really hard to work with. So I might control Z that and you can see that for these areas, it's just very hard to remove it because it's got a lot of blue there and the tone of the person is also lit up to be quite blue in the shot as well. So you try to remove too much blue and it removes blue from everything. So that's kind of the limitation of the qualifier tool. You can somewhat get around that by trying to define a more precise shape with the power window. So if you can, so if you can get these areas out of the shot, then you won't have to worry about filtering them out with the qualifier tool. Hopefully with those two tools, though, you can get a pretty good filtering result. This is also, by the way, when you want to splice in another random background that you generally would try to record with the green screen. So it's much easier to remove that background than uh, having like an actual cityscape. In any case, if you can get a decent result here, then we can layer this as track three. So let's move this up to track three here. And then track one is going to be the original clip. If we add this back in here, then we'll basically just see the original shot, right? Because everywhere that is transparent due to track three is just going to be filled in with the original clip. So what we need to do now is to put the text element in between those two clips. So let's go ahead and drop a text clip onto video track two. Make sure it's in between the two tracks. The filtered one is up on track three and the original clip is on track one. So you should be able to see the text title is sitting behind the person's head. If you did a good job filtering, then you can probably hit play and the text should sit there in the background nicely. You can see a little bit of an artifact there though in these areas. So that's where you'd need to play around with it a little bit more. Okay, so one more trick you can do if you want to take this text and actually move it out in front as things stand with video track three, that's always going to sit on top of the title. So what we can actually do is hide video track three for the duration of the video where we want the title to be in front of the person once again. So I can just go here in the timeline, hit B to go into blade edit mode, make a cut, and then we can right click this part of the clip and hide it. So I will disable the clip by clicking on enable clip. And now we just need to set up some kind of simple transition here. So on text plus, so on the text plus element, we can go to the inspector. I'll click on the layout tab. I'll keyframe the layout and then we'll go forward to the timeline to this break where video track three stops being active and we'll move the text over here. Go about a second further and move it back to the center point five. And so all of these three points will be keyframed as long as you set the first one up as a keyframe. So now what will happen is that the text will slide out to the right and then it will slide back in on top of wherever the person is on the screen. Of course, it's a little bit hard to see because the background is so white. So you can get around that with some drop shadow. I'll go over to the fourth tab here, the shading tab, I believe. Do select element, choose three. It's black shadow by default. 
you enable that, and then you can play around with the settings for the drop shadow. So on Cephnus, I might lower that down to make it more of a hard shadow. And the position, I'll bring that in, lowering the offset closer to zero so that the shadow is a little bit less out there. Okay, and now we can go here, hit play, and we can see our title slide out to the right and come back in. And so that in a nutshell is how you can add text behind a person in DaVinci Resolve 16. Just remember that the slower the movement in the shot, the easier it's gonna be to track. And the less similar the background colors are to the person, the easier it's gonna be to get a masking qualifier on that person so that you can separate it from the background and get a good result. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.